Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Matthew chapter 28 and read verses 1 through 15. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb and afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So this is the story, obviously, of Jesus rising from the grave, a key, key moment in the Bible. And this is so, so cool as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are going to the tomb and they get to see this kind of thing happen for the first time. They see that the stone is rolled away. They kind of get to talk to to an angel and like they're extremely afraid because if you see an, an, you know, an angelic being, that's going to be a little bit jarring. And so they get to talk with him for a little while. And so he's saying, don't be afraid, but Jesus has risen from the grave, just like he told you he was going to do. And so now they're going to go talk to the disciples and meet with them. So they run away. I love what it says in verse eight. It says, afraid yet filled with joy. I, I think that is so funny that they put that in there. I think there's a lot of times when you, at least in my life, when I've had moments, um, not, not quite to the extreme uh, sense of this as the Messiah rising from the grave, but moments where I'm filled with so much hope, but it can be a little bit difficult to kind of fully enter into that hope. Like you kind of want to hedge your bets. Maybe that's a little bit what this is talking about, how they're afraid yet filled with joy. They'd still be a little bit full with fear, even though the angel is like, hey, don't be afraid. Probably still a little bit full of that emotion, even though maybe they've been calmed down a little bit since then. But they're full of joy at the, at the possibility here. And, and they have both of those things in them at the same point. And they go and run to tell the disciples. And then Jesus meets them and he says, you know, he says hello. And they get to talk with him for a little bit and how amazing that would be. And then the, the guards are talking. Um, uh, now, because they've failed their job, the, you know, the guards got, uh, um, I don't know, like turned white as snow, it says in verse three, when they see the appearance like lightning of this angel. Um, they were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So they must have been knocked unconscious or something or like com rendered completely immobile, whatever it was. Um, is really shook them. And so they've failed their job. And so now they're devising a plan to say, hey, we fell asleep and the disciples, you know, took the body away. So that's kind of the plan there. Um, incredible, incredible verses. I think if we can apply this, it's to realize that now under the new covenant with the Holy Spirit, we get that resurrection power in us. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is in us. And now you've probably, you know, if you've been in church circles before, heard that kind of a statement. But I really want you to think about that and let it sink in. I don't think it was until about a maybe a year and a half ago or so that that thought really sank into my heart of like, inside me, God, God is with me. And in that is resurrection power, the same power that rose God, that rose Jesus from the grave is living in me. And man, if we can realize that and then somehow access that, that is an amazing, amazing thing because we have, we have this 
resurrection power in us. So I want you to just think about that as you go through your day today. Really just, just meditate on that. If you're, if you're going over to work right now, just think about that as you work, that God has put resurrection power in you, power that is capable of miracles. So let's increase our faith because if we've got resurrection power, power capable of raising Jesus from the grave, power of capable of raising a bunch of people from the grave when Jesus gave up his spirit, then what might he be able to do for us? He's got plenty of power. Let's pray for him to put that power into our lives. Let's pray for him to put resurrection power into our physical bodies, into our emotions, into our, our mental health, into our finances, into all these things. Let's pray for God to do that because he's got so much power. He's got never ending power. Let's pray for him to be able to do that. And let's just think about that and let it sink in the amazingness of how great his power is and that that is inside of us. So if you would pray with me, Lord God, I just thank you for what you did for us. I thank you that you died. I thank you that you rose from the grave, defeating death. Lord God, we just thank you so much for that. And I just pray that you would help that to sink in how amazing it is that resurrection power lives in us. I pray that that resurrection power would be put to use, Lord God, in our physical bodies. It would be put to use in our minds. It would be put to use in our finances. It would be put to use in our, in our whole life, Lord God, in our emotions. We just pray that that would be in Jesus' name. Amen.